Hello everybody and welcome back to another 1400 scale Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport update. Today we are doing a time frame of 3.40 p.m. on Friday, September 1st. And yeah, it is already September. Moving into the fall months, I mean, technically it's still summer, but uh, we're, we're going into the last days of summer here and we're moving into the fall, so um, that's not great, I guess. Um, not at least not great where I'm where I live. Um, that does not mean good things to come, but um, and yeah, school is starting soon uh, for me. And well, by the time you're watching this, I'm already in school, so that's pretty terrifying. But um, yeah, we'll get into the update here. Uh, we have this our first aircraft here, this Delta Connection CRJ900. This one was offered by SkyWest, and this one is in from Omaha, Nebraska. And it'll be uh, now just pushing back. We'll be heading out to Green Bay, Wisconsin. And now moving into the B concourse here, we have, of course, the Denver Air Connection Dornier 328 right here. This one is in from Ironwood, Michigan. And it'll be heading out to Thief River Falls. Uh, so, yes, uh, this is these those are two EAS routes that are offered by Denver Air Connection. And I, I'm going to try to get on that flight to Thief River Falls at some point. Um, that is a promise that will be happening at some point. Uh, but I'm not quite sure when the date will be. We haven't quite decided on a date yet, but I will be heading up to Three River Falls uh, at some point, and we'll be flying on Dornier 328, but I'm not 100% sure on when that's going to happen, so uh, those are the plans, uh, but I will be flying on this aircraft. But I will do a trip announcement for a trip that I do know that is going to be happening, at least I plan on it happening. Um, Financial-wise, this should work out. Um, that is, I'll be going to Chicago in November, plan is to go on November 4th uh, down to Chicago, flying Delta on their AT-20-300 to Chicago O'Hare in the morning, um, then uh, taking the Blue Line into Chicago, seeing the Museum of Science and Industry, they have some cool aviation stuff there, um, and just transit stuff in general, and then uh, also going over to Grayland Station and uh, checking out the, their store over there at Grayland Station, and then um, finishing it up by taking the Amtrak Empire Builder uh, back to Minneapolis, uh, and I'll probably do some other things in downtown Chicago before I head out, but that will give me uh, some good time in Chicago, like, I don't know, like six or seven hours or so um, to just fool around in Chicago. I love Chicago. Uh, it's a beautiful city, and um, so I'm really excited to head down there. Uh, it will just be a day trip, but it should be a very fun day trip, and I'm excited to uh, see one of my favorite cities in the world which is Chicago. So those are the plans for that. Delta AT20 and Amtrak Empire Builder uh, coach class, but I'm getting my I'm getting my dining car meal. I'm, I'm telling you that. I'm going to I'm going to pay I'm going to dish out the bucks for the for the dining car meal. <laughs> and now moving in to our pair of Delta Connection CR2s. Yes, these are still around. I thought these would have been gone back in like June, but no, they've uh, SkyWest is still offering them. Uh, on the behalf of Delta Connection, they're still sticking around here, uh, so that's cool to see, I guess. Um, and I'm glad that uh, these are still flying around. I mean, they're not the most comfortable aircraft for passengers, but I do like the look of the CRJ 200. So um, it's good that these are still sticking around, just for the nostalgia factor, I suppose. But uh, yeah, they're still here, but they. I gotta imagine they're not going to be around for too much longer. I feel like I've been saying that for like the past few months and they've stuck around they're still here though so we have these two and this could be the last update they're in or it could be we could still see them for many updates to come so uh but i think i, I think they're supposed to be retired at some point this year but i mean sky west is still sticking around with them there are not too many of them left i don't think but we still do have two here and there are still multiple that are flying into msp on a daily basis well we'll see how long that sticks around for but we have on the left of your screen there, uh, SkyWest Operator CRJ200, which came in from Escanaba, Escanaba. I never know how to pronounce this. I think it's Escanaba. And it'll be heading out to Aberdeen, South Dakota. And then next to that one, we have the Delta Connection CRJ200, operated by SkyWest once again. And this one came in from Brainerd, Minnesota, and it'll be heading out to Hibbing. So uh, those are, those Ross at least are still in CRJ200s. There are still a few left on the CRJ200s. You know, they're, they're regional. Route. So there's not, you know, nothing big is going to be is still in the CRJ 200, except for American somehow still has Chicago in a CR 2 for Air Wisconsin. But uh, these are what we have left for Delta Connection, and 
yeah, we'll see how long they stick around. I'm guessing I, they've got to not be sticking around for, for much longer. But they're still here. I, I have the models, and they still look stunning right here. And now right here we have a pair of Shapeways Customs, beginning in the back there. We have the CRJ900 Shapeways Custom. This one is in from Cincinnati, and it will be heading out to the Sioux Falls Regional Airport. Shout out to JJ Skippy. And then our next aircraft here is this Delta Connection E-175 Custom. Uh, and this one is in from uh, Duluth, Minnesota, and this is also operated by SkyWest. And this one will be heading out to Rapid City. Uh, but that one is going to be staying overnight. I'm not sure what why, why that is because it's coming in and came in at uh, uh, 302 and it will be staying overnight so maybe they're getting some repairs done or doing some work on it or something. I'm not quite sure but that one is not going to be heading out to Rapid City until the morning of September 2nd. So uh, interesting situation right there but that is what this aircraft is doing right here. Now Gemini Jets did announce that they will be releasing the Delta Connection E-175 uh, and that is very exciting, and I will be picking one and probably two of those up uh, when, is, when that is released. Very excited for that release. They also announced an A319. Don't know if I'll be getting that one because I already have one, but, you know, two couldn't hurt. I might. That one is a maybe. And also the United uh, A321neo, that one, uh, I might wait for the NG one, but I'm, I'm going to be picking up whichever one re releases first, honestly. Um, just because I'm so excited for that aircraft. Well, it's one of my favorite aircraft out there and on my favorite US airline. So I will be picking up that uh, United A321neo. And they also released, or not released, but they announced a future release for the United 7810, which I already have by Angie Model, so I don't really need to pick up that one. But uh, two of the four, I'll definitely be picking up. Maybe not the Gemini Jets version on the, on the, on the United, but Definitely the, at least, if probably two of the UN 75s, and then maybe an A319 if if it calls for if MSP calls for it. Really, it's just going to be if MSP uh, needs more than one A319, which currently I don't think so. It needs an A320. I need an A320 to be released. Hopefully, NG can do that one, but uh, or Gemini, but probably NG. Uh, but yeah, that's my spiel on that. But thank you to Gemini. They actually did it, or they promised they'll do it. So. I'll be, I'll be picking it up, but now I'll move on. I've been spending way too much time at these regionals right here. But not before we see this Delta Connection CRJ900 in the Comair, 30 years of flight livery. Obviously, this is operated by Endeavor Air, and it's not operated by Comair anymore since they're no longer. But this is a brand new aircraft. So excited to have this one, and this feature here at MSP is just perfect. So, yes, this is a new pickup here. Uh, maybe my rarest model and so yeah so glad to have this one another delta connection crj 900 edition here since we were getting so many and now even more since the crj 200s are going away so yeah this is perfect this one is uh just arrived in from madison wisconsin and it will be heading out to cincinnati ohio later so yeah that one is endeavor operated and yeah that, that we still have one more delta crj 900 left it is a jboys custom but uh we still do have one more so we have four Delta CR9 is in this update. That is that is awesome. We've had three before, but now we have four. We added one more. <laughs> and now we will finally finish with the RJs right here after spending way too much time on these. We have the CRJ900 on the left, the next Shapeways Custom, the fourth one. This one is in from a Rochester operated by Endeavor, and it'll be heading out to Fargo. Next down, we have this Delta Connection E170, filling in for E175, of course, but the actual aircraft did not have the enhanced winglets. Um, and this is also in the in the old livery, the colors in motion livery. This one is in from Memphis, and once again, just like the just like the other one, the other E one seventy five. This one is for some reason staying overnight, so I'm not really sure what the deal is with that. But this one will be heading out to Columbus on uh, the morning of September second, Saturday. And now, finally, finishing up with the sea concourse here, we have two double seven thirty sevens, the seven thirty seven dash eight hundred. Came in from Spokane, Washington, and it'll be heading out to Fargo. Oh, that one's not sitting overnight. Uh, so yeah, two Fargo flights in a row right there. That was pretty cool. Or, I guess not two in a row. The That was the CR9 that's heading out to Fargo, but two two Fargo flights in one update. Two Fargo mentions in one update, so that's nice for our, uh, our Fargo folk out there. And then our uh, next aircraft right here is the 737-900, of course. And this one came in from Fort Myers, and it'll be heading out to Seattle, Washington. So 
very nice right there. Uh, once again, C concourse is packed, so glad that I expanded this and I might even need more expansion here. But um, yeah, so happy that, that happy that it is expanded uh, as much as it is because we definitely needed that uh, clearly because we have consistently filled it in these updates. And next up here we have the first of our Delta A three twenty ones. It is the uh, regular livery A321. This is the Gemini 2019 release, I believe. Um, and this one came in from Phoenix Sky Harbor, or Red River Aviations Airport. And this one will be heading out to New York LaGuardia. And next up here, we have this United 737-800. Uh, now moving into the E concourse, by the way. Uh, this one is in from Chicago O'Hare, and it'll be heading out to Denver. So two of our most consistent United uh, flights right here. Um, so yeah, good to see that on the 737-800. Denver is actually uh, the most served location in terms of number of flights from MSP, according to Flight Radar 24. I believe the most passengers is MSP to Chicago, but although that might have changed, but I mean, both Chicago and Denver are extremely popular, extremely popular because they're both, um, you know, very large airports, very large cities um, in the area. And I got to assume like Atlanta's up there as well, in New York, obviously. Uh, but yeah, Denver, the most served airport in terms of flights from here. So that is kind of surprising, but also not really since it is served by uh, like five airlines out of here. So, I mean, there's United Southwest, Frontier, uh, Delta, obviously. And then um, I think Sun Country also has uh, a Denver flight. I would assume they do because Sun Country, um, I mean, they're a hub airline here. So, uh, and yeah, I think I've seen Sun Country Denver flights. But, so, yeah five airlines out of MSP to Denver, so I mean, naturally they're going to get a lot of service, and uh, definitely it's proven to be successful, and uh, yeah, Denver's a great airport. I'd love to visit Denver at some point. Uh, seems like a great city. Uh, haven't, haven't been out there yet, but it is definitely on my list of places to go, and also places to spot at, obviously. <laughs> and now we move on to these American gates, which are always tricky to get to in, in this corner, so again, not a great angle for, for these ones, but uh, we have on the left of your screen the uh, American Eagle E-175. This one's operated by Republic, and this one came in from New York LaGuardia. And it's on the turn. We'll be heading back out to LaGuardia. The next to that one, we have the American 737-800. Uh, no logo on the winglet. I believe this is the first time this aircraft is appearing at MSP, although it might have, it might have appeared. Uh, we see plenty of American 737-800s here. Uh, so, yeah, that, that is... An, good reason that I got this aircraft to, to put it here at MSB. Uh, and this one came in from Dallas-Fort Worth, and it'll be heading back out there, another turnaround for this one. So, nice pair of American aircraft right here. And now we'll continue on uh, with the Econ course, and we'll actually go over back to United right here for this next aircraft. And here we have the United 737 MAX 9. This one is in from Chicago O'Hare and is on the turn back out to Chicago. So, yep, yeah, there is Chicago once again. Like I said, very served here from MSP, just like Denver. And, well, I pretty, pretty much covered it all with the last United aircraft, so I'm not going to do the whole spiel again. But great to have this aircraft right here. It's a beautiful model by NG. Highly recommend you get it if you can, um, as it is, it is a very nice mold right here. And super glad that I got it at Airliners International. And here we have the Air Canada Express CRJ900, operated by Jazz Aviation. Once again, filling in for an E-175. Um, this one is in from Toronto, and we'll be heading back out there. Uh, yeah, it is unfortunate that I don't have the, the E-175 to accurate, accurately represent this, but when you have so many models out here, it's going to be tough to accurately represent every single airline, especially for an airport as large as MSP. Uh, so Air Canada not getting totally accurately represented, but, I mean, it is still kind of in the same range of uh, range of size, I suppose, of, 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 of aircraft, geez. Uh, so, yeah, uh, unfortunately can't represent uh, Air Canada totally accurately, but uh, the CRJ900 still looks very nice right here. And right across the taxiway here, we have this Delta 717. This one is in from Columbus, Ohio, and it'll be heading out to St. Louis, Missouri. And right here we have this Delta A321. Uh, this is the Gemini 2017 release. Uh, this one uh, came in from Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson or Citrus Aviations Airport and it will later be making the flight out to San Diego. And then right here we have this JetBlue AT20 300. Uh, this one uh, arrived in on one to left and so it is now having to taxi 
basically across the, the entire airport to Terminal 2. Uh, so that's a quite a long taxi for this guy, but um, I guess they're they're managing. They're, they're hopefully keeping the passengers seated on this on this taxi over. Uh, but this one arrived in from Boston, and it will be heading back out there on the, on the turnaround. Uh, hopefully. JetBlue can uh, uh, return the New York service at some point, as um, they did used to have that one, but uh, that's been cut for a while now. But uh, yeah, they're going strong with Boston. I don't anticipate that one getting cut anytime soon, but maybe they'll bring back New York at some point. But uh, they are keeping most of their A220s in Boston. That's where uh, they're stationed in. Uh, so we'll see if uh, they used to send E190s from, uh, from JFK. But we'll see maybe when they get more AT20s over to JFK if they if they start sending them from JFK. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see about that. But Boston's still going strong here, and uh, so yeah, glad to see good to see that here in the JetBlue AT20, and again featuring this fantastic model in an airport update. And right here at the very edge of the F concourse here, we have this Delta A319, and this one is in from San Antonio, Texas, and it will be heading out to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And the next up here we have this Delta AT2300, which is on the taxi out right now to Houston Intercontinental and arrived in from Chicago O'Hare. And once again, another AT20 right here. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, Gemini Jets, not NG. They have been uh, doing a great job at releasing these AT20s. Uh, they, I mean, they released the Breeze one, got Delta. Uh, well, this is their older release, but the new release Delta and also JetBlue. I mean, you gotta wonder: is Air Baltic next? That would be a great. That would be a great one. To, that would be a great one to release. Uh, Air Baltic and their uh, and their newer livery. I mean, Herpo released that one. That was, how, that was technically a special. So, I mean, come on, Gemini. Let's 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 see a, let's see an Air Baltic. I, I would be hyped for. I would be hyped for that. Um, definitely getting one, maybe two for my Riga Airport. But uh, <laughs> that we can save that for another time. But yeah, another beautiful H20 right here. I love the aircraft. I'm super excited to fly on it to Chicago here. Uh, I mean, I already mentioned that previous, previously in the video, but uh, yeah, that'll be very exciting. And now, just arriving here on 1 to right, uh, arriving uh, a little under an hour late, we have this Delta 737 900. Um, and this one is in from Tampa or TPA Spotter 11's airport. Um, glad to see that uh, they've recovered uh, after the uh, Hurricane Idalia that went through there. It didn't seem that they were. Too badly damaged. I mean, they reopened the next day at 4 p.m., so um, they definitely uh, didn't. They weren't hit too hard there, uh, I guess. So that's good to see, and good to see that uh, Tampa is, is is all good right there. Of course, there were other parts of Florida that were hit a lot more hard. So hopefully, everyone is doing okay over there. I mean, in, by the time this comes out, that will be um, in the past. But um, yeah, so hopefully, everyone's doing well down there in in Florida. Uh, and this one is in, like I said, from Tampa, TBA Spotter 11's airport. And it will be heading out to Detroit. Also, that one will be delayed. we will be heading out to Detroit uh, later today. And right here we have this Delta A330. Uh, this one came in from Amsterdam's Schiphol. And it will be, be heading back out there, turn around for this beautiful A330. And then right here, here is our special aircraft for the day, I guess. It is this Delta A321 Neo, uh, a brand new delivery. So this one flew from Hamburg, the uh, Airbus factory in Hamburg, to Reykjavik Keflavik, and then from Reykjavik to Minneapolis. Um, as that, I mean, it's not like their scheduled passenger service, obviously. This is a uh, ferry flight to get this one over here to the States for uh, you know delivery for Delta. But it did park, you know, at the turn, it parked at Gulf 9. So, uh, as, as uh, the the track, according to Flavorator 24, uh, has not moved from there since. So, very weird, or maybe it has moved, but it's still at the airport. Um, but yes, very weird that they decided to park this at a gate. Uh, but yeah, welcome this new A321 Neo uh, from from Airbus uh, from, from their Hamburg factory, which I toured. Fortunately, there won't be a video because uh, they don't allow f photos at all there, and they're very strict about it. But um, yeah, um, I might have even seen this aircraft uh, there. I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, that's very cool delivery flight. Um, so, I mean, also hot photos uh, or hot photo opportunity uh, for jet photos 
registration is November 533 Delta Tango. So that's coming to your airport. Um, there's a hot photo opportunity for that one. Uh, brand new delivery to Delta. So uh, yeah, very, very fun right here. Not sure where this will be heading off to, but uh, yeah, arrived in from Reykjavik after, uh, well, I mean, made a stop in Reykjavik, arrived in from Hamburg. But yeah, so great to see that for for Delta right there. Continuing growing their A321 Neo fleet, I'd love to see it because, like I said earlier, I love the A321 Neos. I think they are a wonderful aircraft and uh, glad to see them being expanded into fleets worldwide. So yeah, here we have another one right here. And next up here, we have the Delta A33900 Neo in the Team USA livery. I will be picking up the new Gemini Jets release of the regular livery A33900 Neo for Delta because they are sending quite a few of those to MSB along with the mostly 33300s, but we are still getting plenty 33900 Neos, and it will just be a nice addition to the Delta wide body fleet. But for now, we just have Team USA right here, and this one came in from Tokyo Haneda, and it will be heading back out there on turnaround once again for this guy. So yeah, great to see this one back here in an airport. This one has been in many airport updates, just like the regular livery 330. Um, and it's been, yeah, it's, 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 it's a workhorse here at MSP, and here it is once again. But to be fair, most of the Delta aircraft in my fleet are workhorses here because um, it's a Delta hub, and uh, yeah, we see, we see a lot of Delta here, surprisingly. So um, uh, yeah, there, this, one, but this one looks great as always right here. And we follow that up here with another special livery, our final aircraft in Terminal 1. And this one is the Delta A321 in the Thank You livery. This one is in from Philadelphia, and it will later be heading out to Orlando MCO. So yes, that will conclude our Terminal 1 here. Uh, pretty nice lineup of a nice assortment of different aircraft right here. But now we'll move on to uh, not just Terminal 2, but also we have cargo and a special visitor uh, for this airport. And then you may be wondering why this American Eagle UN-45 is here, and that is because it's not operated by American Eagle. This is uh, filling in for a JSX UN-45, uh, as I do not have the model. I, I mean, Gemini did make it, but I don't really have much of use for it. But it did come to MSP, so uh, this is just a uh, charter, but still very interesting. I don't know why this is here, but it came in from Windsor Locks Bradley, and it is uh, just chilling right here. It is in the... Uh, it's in the biz chat section here, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure why this is here. I literally have no clue, uh, but it did just show up here, and it's still here as of recording this. So yeah, it came in from Windsor Locks, and um, just chilling right here. Uh, it's kind of like r really big because I just have like a tiny little area right here because it's kind of on the corner because we have Terminal 2 right there and then the runway. So I just kind of squeezed it in right here. So not... <laughs> You can't really fit a new 45 in there, but it gets the job done right here, and I figured I might as well represent it just because it was here at the time of this airport update. So very interesting right there. Not sure why it's here, but it is making a fun little appearance in this airport update. And now welcome to this amazing Sun Country lineup here at Terminal 2. All Sun Countries here. It's not realistic because, I mean, Terminal 2 has... Uh, I mean, Sun Country controls the majority of the gates here, but there are still some that go to Southwest and uh, Frontier, Allegiant, and you know, the other airlines here. But Sun Country does operate a, a majority of the gates out here. And I did put in every single Sun Country 737 that I have in this airport update, almost every single Sun Country model that I have in general. I'm just missing the DC-10, which obviously I'm not gonna put in here because that's not realistic. That doesn't fly here anymore. Um, but yeah, this is pretty insane right here. So buckle up for this uh, just montage of Sun Country. Uh, so we'll be getting on the bottom of your screen there. We have the Transavia hybrid livery, 737-800. This one is in from Seattle, and it'll be heading out to a rapid city. Behind that one, we have the 737-800. Uh, this is in the old livery without winglets. And this one is in from Seattle, and it'll be heading out to Columbus, Ohio. Behind that one, we have this uh, 737-800. And this one uh, has arrived in from uh, Tampa, and it will be heading out to Dallas DFW. And then right here we have the Sun Country 737-800. This is in the 40 years of flight sticker uh, with split scimitar winglets. This one is coming in uh, from Traverse City, and no information on where this one will be heading out to. This is a pretty common thing to happen with Sun Country in these airport updates, uh, because, I mean, I, they have a maintenance space here, and it does often happen. I mean, this might just be sitting here and waiting till the morning, but 
Um, it also might be going in for maintenance, and there is not going to be flying, obviously, if it's undergoing maintenance. So this one is just uh, taxiing in right now, and it will be parking at Hotel 4 in real life, and it will be parking at Hotel 3 in, at, this, at, the, at this airport, since we have to kind of consolidate things here. But uh, So yeah, that is where this one will be uh, heading off to today, really just the gate. So um, yeah, coming in from Traverse City, though, uh, and a nice... Nice model right here, glad to have this one from Gemini Jets, does uh, make a nice addition, even though the color is a little bit off and the wings are, you know, bent to streamliner lengths, um, still glad to have it right here. And right here we have the Sun Country Airlines 737-700 uh, with uh, out winglets and in the Avril Texmont livery. Um, good, to get, good to get this aircraft back in an airport update, I feel like it's been a while since we've included this one. I mean, in real life, this one is just, I think it actually did visit MSP uh, doing some charter service. That's what it mostly does. But it pretty much just ping-ponged back and forth between uh, San Del Cabo and some cities on the West Coast. And then um, flew it to Kona. I, I, it's, it's, this, one, this one's kind of weird. It wasn't the actual aircraft, though, that flew this route. This was on a 737-800 in the same livery. But uh, this one is in from uh, Jacksonville. And it'll be heading out to Las Vegas, Nevada. 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 I don't know why I said Nevada. I, never, I always say Nevada. But some people say Nevada. And that is more accurate to the, it's just, you know, Spanish, where it comes from. So, uh, I guess, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And we will finish off here with two more old liveries. Of course, the 737-700 is no longer flying for Sun Country anymore. But uh, we, we'll still put them in here just because... Just because. Um, this one came in from San Francisco. And it'll be heading out to Portland PDX. The real reason is, is because I don't have enough Sun Country models. But um, we also have the new 737-800. Uh, uh, this one is the Gemini Jets 2013 release. And this was the actual aircraft that flew on this flight right here. Uh, number uh, 804, Syrian Yankee. So that is what this one is right here. And this one came in from Portland, Maine. And it'll be heading out to Denver. Well, there you go. I... <laughs> said I thought Sun Country had a Denver flight earlier and there it is so yeah five airlines have Denver service here I don't think I'm forgetting any I hope I'm not forgetting any because that would be kind of embarrassing but um yeah so that is I guess that leads to why Denver is uh the most popular uh or most connected city from MSP in terms of flights but uh yeah there it is right there full lineup of Sun Countries hope you enjoyed that uh, nice lineup right there um obviously it's not realistic this would never happen in real life but um, they are going to be expanding Terminal 2. So, I mean, they kind of need... I mean, for, to fill some countries' demands, they kind of need to expand Terminal 2. But that looks like it's not going to happen for another uh, 17 years. So, some country, they're going to have to... Uh, they're going to have to hold back a little bit, maybe, since uh, they have been expanding like crazy. And I'm, I'm worried that they're going to run out of gate space here. I suppose that they there are, like, a few hard stand gates which they could use, but I feel like they're not going to do that because as MSP in the dead of winter is not going to be very fun. Um, so we'll see what Sun Country does here if they want to continue their expansion because they're going to have to get some magicians to timetable that thing because, I mean, this is already happening. To be fair, this is seven gates, and they have eight gates plus um, two common use gates if, uh, you know, Allegiant, Frontier, Southwest aren't aren't uh, at the gate, or Jet Blue, even. Um, Hotel 9 and Hotel 10, I suppose they are common use. If Sun Country really needed them, and there wasn't Frontier, Allegiant, or Jet Blue, uh, they could park there, but it's 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 crazy how how much Sun Country has expanded here, and they are getting 737-900s as well next year. I mean, Sun Country, they're, they're pretty incredible. Um, I wouldn't say they're the best product to fly on, but uh, for what they have managed to do with, with their fleet and out of MSP out of all places, I'm mean, not to say that this is a small, I mean, it is a pretty big airport, and we do have a very sizable uh, leisure market. Sun Country, they have still done quite an amazing job of, uh, of expanding out of here, especially from what they were even just a few decades ago, even just a decade ago. Um, they, have, they have done great, a great job. So, uh, yeah. Uh, not, I wouldn't say that they don't really get my recommendation if you're going to fly to MSP. I would suggest Delta, but if you want to fly to MSP and on a budget, which is me, 
Um, although I don't have to fly to MSP, I fly to MSP elsewhere. Um, they're a nice airline. Uh, but yeah, enough ra or rambling about Sun Country. We'll now move on to the cargo uh, apron and our final two aircraft in today's update. And of course, we're going to end it with a pair of MD-11s. This is the FedEx example right here. FedEx MD-11 came in from Memphis, and it will be heading back out there on the turnaround. And as I said, we also have the UPS MD-11 right here, and this one is on the turn from Louisville. So both of those going to their respective hubs, Superport, Worldport. Uh, I suppose FedEx one isn't Superport. That one is... What is, it? is it, FedEx just called their, like, their Super Hub? I forget what FedEx calls Memphis, but uh, UPS Worldport in Louisville, uh, very impressive facility. But, uh, but yeah, that is that is that 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 is two MD11s in a row right here. I didn't expect to see that in in 2023. I, I bet I bet you didn't expect to see that in 2023. Is what I meant to say. Um, so yeah, that'll conclude this airport update. Thank you all for checking this one out. I hope to make this one a little bit longer because I feel like some of my MSP updates have kind of been short, but this one might have been really long because I rambled a lot. Um, at different sections of this airport. So sorry about that. If this, if, if this airport update is like half an hour long, don't mean to be that. They should be around 20 minutes, these MSP ones, and then the other one should be around five to, five to 10 minutes. But um, yeah, but that'll conclude this airport update. Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, this one was kind of a fun one to film because I kind of went off the rails at some point, but that's fine to do with every so often, I think. Uh, if you want to go off the rails in your airport updates, uh, go ahead. I think it makes for some interesting uh, interesting talking points. but. Maybe not. Maybe you want to get out of here as soon as possible. And in which case you can, because I will say to you, good night. Und auf Wiedersehen. See you in the next one.